Welcome, friends. Welcome. To Ghost Stories. With me, Luke. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Good to see you all in the chat. Always a pleasure to see you. See some friendly faces in there already. Ah, oh, a couple of, uh, couple of very kind super chats in already. Saying, Bradley, thank you. Love these stories, Luke. Thank you so much. You're a fantastic narrator, and you really bring these tales to life with your amazing voices. Hashtag spooky squad. It's a good job I changed into a, a, a dramatic voice halfway through that comment. Uh, Fancy Space Owl says, hello, Luke. Fingers crossed this stream goes well. I baked a ton of gingerbread elephants today, so I have my snacks right here with me, and I'm ready to be spooked. And Gentle Mandrill says, the real horror was YouTube today. Hope it works. Been really looking forward to this story. Was told it is quite creepy. Got the brandy red ready for that. Yeah, oh gosh, hang on. Look at, oh gosh. Quite extreme green screening going on there. Better keep my hands out of shot. Mm. So yeah, for context, wow. I have had, it's been a day. Technically, um, I'm sure many of you saw everyone outside extra. I was trying to stream some demon souls and it just YouTube just was not having it. Just it basically the stream basically became unwatchable. Um, I have been conducting a series of internet experiments since then. Basically, I've just kind of had this stream going for you know since uh, like for about an hour. Um, not live though. And it seems to have been going okay, so, you know, fingers crossed and touch wood and all that. Here we go. Um, I won't actually touch wood or cross my fingers because um, uh, I'm banned from superstitious behaviour <laughs> because because of having OCD. But, uh, but you know what I mean. Um, Bella Luga says, Hello, Hey Luke, I'm finally catching one of these live, getting my wisdom teeth out today, so this is a happy distraction from the true horror of dentistry and pre-op fasting. Oh my gosh. Dentistry, pre-op fasting. These these all sound these all sound tough, Bella, but hopefully the hopefully this ghost story is is, is a little bit of tonic. Mm. And Fran Fry says, I'll be lurking today because migraine, but happy to catch the stream. Oh Fran Fry, I hope you feel better soon. Migraines really suck. That is awful. Um uh, yeah, feel better. Feel better soon. I'll try not to. Well, I don't know what makes migraines worse, but whatever it is, I'll do my best to avoid it. Um, welcome. Let me know uh, in the chat if this is the first ghost story you're catching live, so that I can say hello. And um, <laughs> and meanwhile. Uh, let me give you the standard introduction if it is your first time. Uh, we read ghost stories here, classic old gothic horror, and we have a real, a real 
a real ripper today. August Heat by W.F. Harvey, who we have read before. You may remember the work of W.F. Harvey because W.F. Harvey is the person who wrote The Beast with Five Fingers, which I think is the favourite ghost story that we've ever done uh, on these streams. Um, so, and, and, and this one, this one is a cracker. It's quite short. It is short. It's a short story. It's not going to take me long to get through this one. And I think because it is short, I probably will try and just like get through it all in one. Uh, no breaks this time because I want to try and it, it, I think it's short enough that I want to try and like keep the momentum going, you know. Um, Jack Shaw says, first time watching live, but thoroughly looking forward to it. Welcome along, Jack Shaw. Everyone say hello to Jack Shaw in the chat. Um, great to see you. Fernand TD says, first spook. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great to see some first timers. Oh, NimbleTax says, OCD Solidarity. Luke had to go out for a flu jab. Must have taken 20 minutes to check everything over and over and over again. Oh, that really sucks, NimbleTax. I'm sorry. That's rubbish. And, I mean, who knows? Could that... I, I find that when I'm... When my OCD kicks off massively, it's often... Uh, it doesn't it doesn't seem like there's an obvious link at the time, but in retrospect, there's normally something else stressful going on in my life. So I wonder. It. But I hope the flu jab went well. Um, uh, yeah. And, you know, thanks. Thanks for the solidarity. Uh, Fran Fry says, thank you, sweet, lovely community. And David Badalotti. Thank you. Well, wow, very generous. Super chat says, as usual, can't catch this live. But thank you for these streams. You are so welcome. Oh, Sophie says OCD solidarity with me, too. Sophie. See ya. I see ya. Um, right. Okay. Disclaimer time. Um, we like reading these stories because they are good fun and it is awesome to read these old horror stories and see where some of the classic horror tropes that we're so familiar with today originated. And also, lots of them are good, genuinely creepy, sometimes they're terrible and hilarious. Um, but along the way, keep out, keep a weather eye out for the real horror Victorian social attitudes um, to all sorts of things. Mental health, colonialism, um, gender, race, uh, animal cruelty. The list really does go on, folks. Um, Caution, Victorians ahead, says Katie Douglas. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Shy Violet says animals. Yeah, the animals don't tend to come off terribly well. Um, hmm, I could tell you whether there is an animal, whether there is or isn't an animal. I think it would be a spoiler. August Heat by W.F. Harvey. I think we're about ready to kick off, uh, I think. Um, oh, Sally Jack, Pumpkin King. Let's read a couple more chats. Says OCD Solidarity. It really sucks. Starting treatment next week. And I'm so scared, but I also want to work on it so my life will get better. Ah, oh, Sally Jack Pumpkin King. I, uh, that, I mean, yeah, it's, it's scary stuff. But, um, do not, do, do not, do not be alarmed. Don't worry. It's, um, it's not going to do you any harm and it could do, it, it could, it could be enormously helpful, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, already. Um, so yeah, hang tough. You got this. Um. Okay, right. Are we? Ah, oh, San uh, and um, Sandra Tesca says first time catching you live. Welcome, Sandra Tesca. Welcome. Right now, I'm gonna just more. Uh, if I lean in, am I clipping through the green screen? Oh, my cheeks are a little bit. Only if I get real close. It's probably close enough, right? You're not here to look at my face. You're here for the. Well, I. Don't, I mean, what are you here for? I don't. I, it's a mystery to me why you keep coming back. But I'm grateful you do. Um, the voice is the most important thing, right? And the level, the microphone seems to, or every, I can see, I can see that that's working, so that's fine. Okay. I think with my standard neck crack, it's time to kick off. Okay. August Heat by W.F. Harvey. Feniston Road, Clapham, August 20th, 1910. 
I have had what I believe to be the most remarkable day in my life, and while the events are still fresh in my mind, I wish to put them down on paper as clearly as possible. Let me say at the outset that my name is James Clarence Withamscroft. I'm 40 years old, in perfect health, never having known a day's illness. By profession, I am an artist. Not a very successful one, but I earn enough money by my black and white work to satisfy my necessary wants. My only relative, a sister, died five years ago, so that I am independent. I breakfasted this morning at nine, and after glancing through the morning paper, I lighted my pipe and proceeded to let my mind wander in the hope that I might chance upon some subject for my pencil. The room, through, uh, though door and windows were open, was oppressively hot, and I had just made up my mind that the coolest and most comfortable place in the neighbourhood would be the deep end of the public swimming bath when the idea came. I began to draw. So intent was I on my work that I left my lunch untouched, only stopping work when the clock of St Jude struck four. The final result, for a hurried sketch, was, I felt sure, the best thing I had done. It showed a criminal in the dock immediately after the judge had pronounced sentence. The man was fat, enormously fat, the flesh hung in rolls about his chin, it, it creased his huge stumpy neck. He was clean-shaven, perhaps I should say a few days before he must have been clean-shaven, and almost bald. He stood in the dock, his short clumsy fingers clasping the rail, looking straight in front of him. The feeling that his expression conveyed was not so much one of horror as of utter, absolute collapse. There seemed nothing in the man strong enough to sustain that mountain of flesh. I rolled up the sketch, and without quite knowing why, placed it in my pocket. Then, with the rare sense of happiness which the knowledge of a good thing well done gives, I left the house. I believe that I set out with the idea of calling upon Trenton, for I remember walking upon Lytton Street and turning to the right along Gilchrist Road, along the bottom of the hill, where the men were at work on the new tram lines. From there onwards, I have only the vaguest recollection of where I went. The one thing of which I was fully conscious was the awful heat that came up from the dusty asphalt pavement as an almost palpable wave. I longed for the thunder promised by the great banks of copper-coloured cloud that hung low over the western sky. I must have walked five or six miles when a small boy roused me from my reverie by asking the time. It was twenty minutes to seven. When he left me, I began to take stock of my bearings. I found myself standing before a gate that led into a yard, bordered by a strip of thirsty earth where there were flowers, purple stock and scarlet geranium. Above the entrance was a board with the inscription, Atkinson, Monumental Mason, Worker in English and Italian Marbles. From the yard itself came a cheery whistle the noise of hammer blows, and the cold sound of steel meeting stone. A sudden impulse made me enter. A man was sitting with his back towards me, busy at work on a slab of curiously veined marble. He turned round as he heard my steps, and I stopped short. It was the man I had been drawing, whose portrait lay in my pocket. He sat there, huge, elephantine, the sweat pouring from his scalp, which he wiped with a red silk handkerchief. But though the face was the same, the expression was absolutely different. He greeted me, smiling as if we were old friends, and shook my hand. I apologised for my intrusion. Everything is hot and, and glary outside, I said. This seems an oasis in the wilderness. I don't know about the oasis, he replied. But it certainly is hot, as hot as hell. Take a seat, sir. He pointed to the end of the gravestone on which he was at work, and I sat down. That's a beautiful piece of stone you've got hold of, I said. He shook his head. In a way it is, he answered. The surface here is as fine as anything you could wish, but there's a big floor at the back, though I don't expect you'd ever notice it. I could never make a really good job of a bit of marble like that. It would be all right in the summer, like this, 
wouldn't mind the blasted heat. But wait till the winter comes. There's nothing quite like frost to find out the weak points in stone. Then what's it for? I asked. The man burst out laughing. <laughs> You'd hardly believe me if I was to tell you it's for an exhibition, but it's the truth. Artists have exhibitions. So do grocers and butchers. We have them too. All the latest little things in headstones, you know. He went on to talk of marbles, which sort best withstood wind and rain, and which were easiest to work, then of his garden and a new sort of carnation he had bought. At the end of every other minute he would drop his tools, wipe his shining head and curse the heat. I said little, for I felt uneasy. There was something unnatural, uncanny in meeting this man. I tried at first to persuade myself that I had seen him before, that his face, unknown to me, had found a place in some out-of-the-way corner of my memory, but I knew that I was practising little more than a plausible piece of self-deception. Mr. Aitkinson finished his work, spat on the ground, and got up with a sigh of relief. There! What do you think of that? He said with an air of evident pride. The inscription, which I read for the first time, was this. Sacred to the memory of James Clarence Withencroft. Born January 18th, 1860. He passed away very suddenly on August 20th, 1910. In the midst of life, we are in death. For some time, I sat in silence. Then a cold shudder ran down my spine. I asked him where he had seen the name. Oh, I didn't see it anywhere, replied Mr. Aitkinson. I wanted some name and I, I put down the first that came into my head. Why do you want to know? It's a strange coincidence, but it happens to be mine. He gave a long, low whistle. And the dates? can only answer for one of them. And that's correct. It's a rum go, he said. But he knew less than I did. I told him of my morning's work. I took the sketch from my pocket and showed it to him. As he looked, the expression of his face altered until it became more and more like that of the man I had drawn. And it was only the day before yesterday, he said. That I told Maria there were no such things as ghosts. Neither of us had seen a ghost, but I knew what he meant. You probably heard my name, I said. And you must have seen me somewhere and forgotten it. Uh, were you at Clacton-on-Sea last July? I had never been to Clacton in my life. We were silent for some time. We were both looking at the same thing. The two dates on the gravestone, and one was right. Come inside and have some supper, said Mr. Aitkinson. His wife was a cheerful little woman with the flaky red cheeks of the country bread. Her husband introduced me as a friend of his who was an artist. The result was unfortunate, for after the sardines and watercress had been removed, she brought out a Doré Bible and I had to sit and express my admiration for nearly half an hour. I went outside and found Aitkinson sitting on the gravestone smoking. We resumed the conversation at the point we had left off. You must excuse my asking, I said. But do you know of anything you've done for which you could be put on trial? He shook his head. I'm not a bankrupt. The business is prosperous enough. Three years ago I gave turkeys to some of the guardians at Christmas, but that's all I can think of. And they were small ones too, he added as an afterthought. He got up, fetched a can from the porch, and began to water the flowers. Twice a day regular in the hot weather, he said, and then the heat sometimes gets the better of the delicate ones. And ferns, good lord, they could never stand it. Where do you live? I told him my address. It would take an hour's quick walk to get back home. It's like this, he said. We'll look at the matter straight. If you go back home tonight, you take your chance of accidents. A cart may run over you and there's always 
banana skins and orange peels, to say nothing of fallen ladders. He spoke, he spoke of the improbable with an intense seriousness that would have been laughable six hours before, but I did not laugh. The best thing we can do, he continued, is for you to stay here till twelve o'clock. We'll go upstairs and smoke. It may be cooler inside. To my surprise, I agreed. We are sitting now in a long, low room beneath the eaves. Aitkinson has sent his wife to bed. He himself is busy sharpening some tools at a, at a little oil stone, smoking one of my cigars the while. The air seems charged with thunder. I am writing this at a shaky table before the open window. The leg is cracked, and Aitkinson, who seems a handyman with his tools, is going to mend it as soon as he has finished putting an edge on his chisel. It is after eleven now. I shall be gone in less than an hour. But the heat is stifling. It is enough to send a man mad. The end. Told you it was short. Pow, there we go. There we go. Very neat. Very, very tidy little story. I love it. Um, I This story came onto my radar months ago because, you know, when I started doing this, I was looking up lists of, you know, you know like famous short ghost stories. And this was on like every list. But it always had the caveat. There isn't really technically s literally a ghost in it. And so I was like, oh, you know, I would rather read ones that, that literally obviously have a ghost. Um, but I can see why it is regarded as like a, a, a classic piece of horror because I find that story very creepy um, and very clever and very effective and really well written. Um, uh, W.F. Harvey, a real, it was one, a, this one was a real joy to read. It had structurally, it had quite a lot in common with the yellow wallpaper in that there were a lot of paragraphs that are just a single sentence, just like these little statements. Um, which I really enjoy. The man burst out laughing. Paragraph. It was the man I had been drawing whose portrait lay in my pocket. Paragraph. A sudden impulse made me enter. Paragraph. Um, yeah. Uh, the the um, the other thing I really like is... At first when you get the drawing of the guy in the dock. Like the, you know, on trial. Um... I think you, I think it's kind of through description and just through like tropes and familiarity with this kind of stuff. I think you're sort of queued up to be sus very suspicious of that character. I really appreciated that that actually when you meet him, he is or at least seems to be really genuine and equally confused as to why he's like come up with you know as as to as to why he has a gravestone with this guy's um you know birthday and and a name on. So, yeah, I really like it. I also love, and this is actually, this is what I really want from the chat here. I'm going to read you the end again, because when I read the ending, especially having um, read it before and knowing the end, I'm looking for what's going to kill him. And actually, I think in the last sort of just few paragraphs, it does a brilliant job of just seeding a few little ideas of of what could what it could be that does him in. So I'm going to read the ending again. We are sitting now in a long low room beneath the eaves. Aitkinson has sent his wife to bed. He himself is busy sharpening some tools at a little oil stone, smoking one of my cigars the while. Accidental tool murder. Death by cigar fire. The air seems charged with thunder. Struck by lightning, I am writing this at a shaky table before the open window. This is the big one for me. Shaky table, open window. The leg is cracked and Aitkinson, who seems a handyman with his tools, is going to mend it as soon as he has finished putting an edge on this chisel. Some kind of cosmic accident is coming where the leg of that table breaks and he just tumbles out the window and somehow Aitkinson ends up in the frame for it and is charged with murder. And that's why he's in court in the drawing. It's... Uh, that I don't know. That's my that's my theory anyway. But it's but but the ambiguity is brilliant. I love the abrupt ending. The heat. 
The descriptions of the heat, though brief, are so good. There's a nice, um, there's a really lovely description of, of like, I mean, it's freezing cold in London now. It's like, the temperatures really plummeted recently, but, but like, I really, really felt this. I really love the way that this was phrased. Where was it? There we go. The, the one thing of which I was fully conscious was the awful heat that came up from the dusty asphalt pavement as an almost palpable wave. I longed for the thunder promised by the great banks of copper-coloured cloud that hung low over the western sky. I think, like, most like horror stories, they're almost always like set at night or something. I, I always enjoy a bit of horror that happens in the daytime because actually that descri description of that cloud just seems so ominous and so menacing and so just a sense of unease and tension really good really good um but what did you think let me know your thoughts let's check in with the chat uh charlotte winwood says it was my birthday on monday so i wanted to share some birthday cheer thanks charlotte that's really kind and generous of you thank you for the spooky stories music and fostering a great community here ah charlotte Winwood. it's all i can take no credit um but uh, happy birthday for this for this uh, for this Monday just gone. Hope you had a good day, gentle mandrel. I loved this story in the open end. So well written. Wasn't what I was expecting, but it was great. Also, it really was short. But the story doesn't need more. Short but effective. Amazing story. Yep, love that review. Fernand TD says fantastic little tale. Cognitive failure says I feel like there's a sense of inevitability that they will both give in to. That is. That is cool. Oh, I like this. Frankie A says, an idea. The mason comes towards him with a chisel to fix the chair. The protagonist has gone crazy and paranoid from the heat and either lashes out or tries to flee via the window. Yeah, could be. Could be. Could be. Uh, I like that. Megan B says, tumbles out of the window and lands neatly in the grave by the gravestone. Planned, almost, you could say. And that's what the trial is for. Yep. I like that as well. I buy it. Um, Denise L says, kind of miss a haunting in this one, though. Yeah, you do sort of miss, miss a... You do kind of miss the ghost, but it's fun. It's fun. Um... Claire T. Rex says, I feel like Aitkinson just full on loses it and chisels himself in the head. Like the inevitability of this situation sends him over the edge. Yeah, I like that. I also like this from Lemony Nose who says, I still choose to believe they were soulmates and had bonded over their chosen crafts. That's nice. They were brought, to, they were brought together in a soulmatey kind of way. That's nice. That's not nice, can't they? Can't they just sometimes be nice um <laughs> uh Sawyer street art says the story is lovely but my favorite is the formatting and how it sets pacing and emphasis file under further reasons i frustrated my writing teachers i do this um and dally daydream says oh man if the narrator dies at the mason's house and the mason is hanged for it they are each the cause of the other's death poetic yep 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 ah Fernand TD says the drawing itself frames the man. Yes, if on the corpse they discover a drawing of a drawing of the other man who was in the room, Aitkinson, on trial, that suggest if I was the investigator, I'd be like, well, it seems that this mason was in some way sorry, not the mason, it seems that this uh, painter was in some way this artist was in some way suspicious of you. So there you go. And uh, Skull Drugged Punk says, Hi Luke, thanks so much for doing these stories. This one was particularly good. It's my birthday tomorrow. Any chance of a shout out? Of course! Skull Drugged Punk. Happy birthday for tomorrow. I hope you have a great one. Um, Yeah. Oh, Friday. Friday is the best day to have a birthday on. Write it off, work-wise. Three-day three day weekend. Yeah, thank you very much for watching and for tuning in, and I hope you have a brilliant birthday. Rad. Um, oh, Elise suggests Shakespearean accidental double suicide. Yes, could be. Could be. 
Ooh, Jane Cluett says, lesson from Peter Straub. All ghost stories tell us that we are the ghosts. This one does it in a particularly cool and literal way. That is nice. That is a that is a snappy bit of analysis that I enjoy. Here's what I want to dig into. The role of the boy. Uh, do you remember, like, he's walking along and he's walked like five or six miles. And he can't remember, um, like, where he is. Um, where are we? Where are we? I've lost my place. Yeah, I had walked, I must have walked five or six miles when a small boy roused me from my reverie by asking the time. And then you're like, oh, what? To, oh, sorry, young man, here is the time. 20 minutes to seven. Where am I, by the way? Clearly, if that boy, small boy, had not sort of stopped and been like, Mister, what's the time? Then he would have just walked on past the, past the mason's yard. And you have to wonder, is the boy a demon? Well, that was my thought anyway. Is the boy a demon? Oh, Raymond Lee says, it's not my first story, but take my monies anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Raymond Lee. That is that is generous. Thank you. And Nora Blanche says, I'm just going to tell myself that they're soulmates and went on living a lovely life together. Yeah, that's nice. Hmm. But we don't, we don't know for sure that Aitkinson, the mason, is innocent. He could also have been a demon. But we don't know. Rebecca M says, oh, super chat to say, I got into the history BA I applied for. Hooray, here's to being a broke student instead of a broke unemployed gal. Rebecca M, massive congrats. Let's all drop some congrats in the chat to Rebecca M. Oh, congratulations, that's so cool. History BA, that's going to be so much fun. You'll be a Bachelor of the Historical Arts. That's awesome. Congratulations, Rebecca. And that's, um... Oh, that's going to be so much fun. Um... <laughs> Lemony No says, rule number one, never trust Victorian children. Yep. Yep. Um... <laughs> and Megan B says, also, sent his wife to bed is a bit of a ton funny turn of phrase. Off you go to bed, dear me, and the artist are having a smoke. Yeah, it is a bit weird. I can't tell if that is deliberately weird, if it's supposed to kind of raise an eyebrow and go like, what's going on there? Does he want no witnesses? Or whether it's just Victorian nonsense that, you know, that it would, that as, as a matter of course, one would send one's wife to bed. Ah, ha 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 ha. Andrew Martinez says, hey, Luke, I would suggest all the possibilities are true. I like this. Thunder startles the painter, hits the table that breaks and tumbles onto the chisel. Yes. So st thunder startles painter hits table that breaks, tumbles onto chisel. Dudes underneath working on it, maybe <laughs> impaled on the chisel immediately. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. That'd do it. That'd do it. It's really cool. It may, it kind of makes me think of this is a this is actually a fairly uh, this is quite an unfair and unflattering comparison to be honest. But um, it makes me think of like episodes of like CSI, you know, where they would like that show would like open with a seemingly impossible like how did this happen? And then over the course of the episode, you'd be like, oh, of course, startled by thunder, fell onto the thing, you know, like that. Um, Oh, Andrew D. Wow, my goodness. A very generous um, uh, uh, super chat there from Andrew D. Who says, thanks for these streams, Luke. And all the efforts you make. I'm genuinely upset that I'll rarely be able to catch them live anymore. But it'll be nice to have something to look forward to later. They are a great relief after work. Oh, Andrew D. I'm, well, um, we'll, we'll, we'll miss having you live. But don't worry. But yeah, in, enjoy the, enjoy the on-demand version. It's still good. It's still good. Um, yeah. Oh, that's so nice. It's really nice that so many people drop by to watch these stories. And also nice that people, like, watch them after the fact, you know, like, afterwards, not live. Um, yeah. I watch a lot of live streams after the fact. And it's still good. Um, but yeah, thanks, Andrew D. Um, and yeah, and hope, 
hope hope work goes well. <laughs> Tori248 says, hope he died at exactly 11.59, just for added agony. <laughs> that would do it. That would do it. And Sir Trelene calls this Victorian Final Destination, which, yep, that's it. That's exactly what this is. It's Victorian Final Destination. And Mr. Team Corvette down in the chat says, Oh, is the story saying that our belief in coincidence can actually dictate something happening that otherwise wouldn't occur naturally? Let's dig in. Let's unpack that because I think there is... I think there is something there. Yeah, because you, you kind of have to think that... I don't know, if he didn't have the drawing of like... Maybe it's just a coincidence. Imagine if it is a coincidence. But... Be but it's the kind of coincidence that you can't help but read into. So, you know, when Aitkinson is like, why don't you stay here until midnight? Which, of course, you know, is going to lead to the fateful accident that, ends, you know, ends up with one dead and one on trial for murder. That was completely unnecessary. And it was just a big coincidence. And he could have just walked home and it would have been uneventful. Food for thought. I like that, though. Nice one, Dan. Cognitive Failure says, Thank you for providing my favourite content on the internet. Oh, Cognitive Failure. That's very, very flattering. The internet's a big place. A lot of good a lot of, a lot of good content out there. So, I, so that is that is very much... That is very kind. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dan also suggests... Oh, the embarrassment of all the, the embarrassment of Victorian men not to murder each other just because they can't admit to coincidence. Yeah, could be that. Could be that. Uh, Sawyer Sweetheart says, vote for him being caught in a hell loop of his own demise um, to ever relive this feeling of unease and coincidence. Uh, it was pointed out that that would explain the ground being hot. We're through the looking glass now. This is good. This is good. He's in. He's already dead and in hell. Also, Nora Blanche points out, love that he brought up the extreme dangers of wild banana peels. Yeah, I think this is this is definitely the only ghost story that we've read, and probably the only bit of horror that we're likely to read that genuinely mentions the threat of an abandoned banana peel uh, or orange peels. People, you know, you you walk around, you look out for the banana skins, but you you can so easily be so focused on spotting those little treacherous yellow slippery banana skins that you miss the orange peel, and bam, there you go, slide right down a manhole. Could happen, could happen. Wayward kitten says, uh, "Well, this one will keep me awake tonight. Amazing story. Really love this one." Great wayward kitten. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I thought it was a, I thought it was a cracker this one. Um, also, we did. Um, uh, I read. Um, we did the Beast with Five Fingers, obviously, which was by the same author, W. F. Harvey. But that story is so different. It's it's like it's long and it's really schlocky. It's about a disembodied hand that that can't stop killing. Um, so this was really really different and and. But actually, like, um, W.F. Harvey was quite, like, wrote a fair amount, but it's hard to track it down. It's not easy to find, um, it's not easy to find his stories. Um, so I sort of hadn't really made the effort, but I kind of, like, August Heat, after I read August Heat, since then I've actually read a few other ones. Um, there's another one, Across the Moors, that I read, and one called The Clock. Uh, and we and trust me, we're we're going to cover both of those on 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 um on these streams because I mean they're also short, also short ones, but they are they are belters. They you know they are they are both good. Um, but I think to queue up next week, I think it's time. I think we I think we owe it to ourselves uh, to treat ourselves to a little bit more M R James. I think you know M R James is kind of the the solid backbone i would say the james story like they're they're creepy they reliably set the they set the they set the tone i think for this whole series series i was wrong to call it a series that sounds a bit pretentious and full-on but but yeah mr james that's the next one we'll do it is um creepy it's 
a creep. It's a creepy one. Yeah, yeah. Next time, Mr. James. I don't know exactly when it when it will be, but um. Uh, yeah, hopefully next week. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I'll look at the calendar. But anyway, that's the next one. That's the next ghost story we're doing. Bit more Mr. James. Lovely stuff. Um. Oh, cool. Almost Human says thanks for the stories and for inspiring me to start writing my own ghost stories. <gasps> You're so welcome, Almost Human. That's awesome. That's cool. Writing your own ghost stories. Hmm. Sorry, got really, really distracted thinking about that, but that's cool. Um, Abadosian Chulak 2 says... Um, thanks again for a great story. I've had a nagging, um, uh, I've had a nagging question of late, and I'm sorry if it's awkward to answer, but the super chats, you'll get at work. Does that go to your operating budget, or do you see any bit of it directly? Uh, that's, no, don't worry, don't worry about asking that. It's, it's, it's operating budget. It, it keep it helps keep the, it helps keep the lights on. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's probably the, that's probably the, the the clearest answer I can give in brief. Um, yeah, it, it all all go that and you know like stuff from ads, everything merch. It, it all you know keeps keeps everything rolling. Um, and Chitty Production says watching this and been rewatching all the show of the weekends. Thanks for keeping me amused during hard times. Um, oh, that's cool. Rewatching all the show of the weekends. I tell you what, I was watching one. I was watching an old one recently, not for like vanity reasons. I was looking for a bit of footage that I had a vague memory. Didn't we talk about this? I need this clip of this thing, and I was just like trying to trying to find it. And um, but but yeah, yeah. It's so weird. It's it's already. I mean, I know it has actually genuinely been a really long time now since we were since we were in the studio filming stuff together but actually like i was watching i was like oh my god it just looks just sitting on a on just like be you know just sort of and i think like you know like andy wandered across the front of the camera stuff and i'm like my goodness that's so unsafe all those people need to get further away from me than they are <laughs> it's weird isn't it it's weird how it's weird how um weird how this year is kind of like I guess how quickly you sort of get into that mindset of like this is this you know the rules the distancing and stuff um yeah the purple sofa hmm we'll get back there we'll get back there I mean so much has changed who even who even knows what um. Who even knows what what? Anyway, what am I? You don't need me to tell you that there's no point in speculating on the future at the moment. Um, but there, but there we go. Um, uh, yeah, right, 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 right. Um, hang on, hang on. Let me let me catch up. Uh, oh, this is a cool idea in the chat. I can see folks talking about this. Sophie says we should have a story writing competition. Luke's favorite gets read on stream. <gasps> That is a cool idea. Nobody do that yet. Nobody write... I mean, obviously, write ghost stories if you want to. Nobody enter a competition yet. Uh, the competition is not open. It is not a thing yet. Don't write stories yet to send me them. Let me have a think. Let me have a think about that. Let me figure out if that's something logistically that I have time for and that I can manage because I love the idea and I would, I, and I, I would want to do it, but I'd only want to do it if we can do it properly and if we can do it justice. So... Let me have a think. Sophie, that's a brilliant idea. Thank you. Let me have a think. Again, I'm thinking about it. Don't write any ghost stories yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nick Jeffrey says, um, uh, YouTube threw me an old interview you did for Channel 5 for the PS4 launch. You never told me you were telly famous. You also missed my other super chat. Oh, Nick Jeffrey, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, Nick Jeffrey also said earlier, uh, already got stuck into my Oxvent calen calendar. Oh, the advent calendar is going out. Brilliant. And looking forward to getting the scarf. It had better have that Westaway stank or I'll complain. Nick Jeffrey, no, yours will be, yours will be washed clean. 
<laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, and as to, yeah, as to the Channel 5 thing, it's not really telly famous, but in my old job, I used to do like quite a lot of uh, I guess what you would call punditry, which is where like sometimes like if there was a I was a technology writer, right? So that, so occasionally like if there was um if there was like a if if something happened, ba I mean it was almost always Apple. Basically, when there was a new iPhone, um, sometimes if you were I don't know Sky News or the radio or whatever or the BBC or, or CNN, it doesn't matter who Channel Five, CNN, whatever, you would be like, um, hey. We're not going to look like we know what we're talking about unless we have an expert on to give us some analysis. So you'd have the newsreader go, there was a new iPhone today, but is it good? Well, here with me is technology uh, writer Luke Westwood. And then I would have a, a, a staggeringly brief amount of time to go, well, it is good. The, the new camera advancements are going to be of interest to many, but... Uh, Apple is facing increasing competition from the likes of Samsung, which is bringing some really, really decent and affordable handsets to market this year. And then they'd go, thanks, Luke. And that would have taken me all afternoon to get over there and do the thing. Anyway, but that was, yeah, but I loved doing it. I loved doing that stuff. Like, it was really exciting and nerve wracking. Um, yeah, there you go. <sighs> Sorry, just rambling on now, aren't I? Um, well... Ahmed Medat Salem says, what's your daily driver phone? It is, in fact, a Samsung. It's got a horrible case on it. It is, in fact, the Galaxy S9 Plus. Yep. Um, uh, Jorgen Ervik says, thoughts on Cyberpunk? Getting hyped for it? I really am. The, 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 the journey that I'm on with... Uh, I, I, I will wrap up this stream soon. I will not just, like, talk about Cyberpunk the whole time and stuff um the, the the journey i'm on with uh cyberpunk is uh i'm super excited for it but like for me what i've seen of it like the trailers the gameplay videos the promotional material doesn't do it for me it, it does not do it for me at all it's like it seems so serious and gritty and i just it's not it's not lighting my fire to be completely frank but i loved the witcher 3 so much and i went back and i watched some trailers for the witcher 3 and obviously the witcher 3 is was kind of positioned at launch as a kind of you know quite you know sort of serious gritty dark fantasy looking thing and then you play the witcher 3 and you realize that it's ridiculous and hilarious and and dramatic and you know sad and funny and all that sort of stuff so I'm I'm just kind of hoping basically that all of the kind of the like weird side quests and fun RPG stuff is in Cyberpunk. We just haven't seen it yet. They just sort of show us the kind of like upfront main story first hour, you know, the grit the the gritty stuff. We'll see. Um, Nick Jeffrey says Triss or Yen. Yen. Yennefer, I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I don't, I don't feel like I should dignify that question any further by going into it. Yennefer, she's so freaking cool. Um, Janique says, are there going to be any music streams soon? Oh, that's um, yeah, music streams. I should do some. Okay, okay. I have, I am writing some new music. I have written some new music. I have finished one song. So yeah, it's on the horizon, but like, oh man, I've got some other, um, mm, yeah, but yeah, I mean, what I really liked was that, that we did the, um, the Velma's grave stream and I loved that. And that was just basically like a guide through my Adobe audition, like, you know, um, timeline for that song, just going through it, playing all the tracks individually and showing all the effects that are on them and how it's all layered up. And I really enjoyed that. Um, the song that I feel, yeah, I absolutely will do that again with the next thing that is released. Um, in terms of like the sort of improv stuff, I don't know. Oh yeah. Okay. So man, there's a lot going on at the moment. Okay. Do you remember last stream? I sort of like cautiously raised the idea of like doing a Lego live stream where I build Lego live and we have a few different angles. Well, um, everyone seemed very keen. 
So I ordered a I ordered a Lego set that I think is pretty on brand, and um, you know I've I had to, I've got like a, a few little extra bits of hardware that I need. So sort of you know ordered them. They're they're coming in now. So you know stuff's arriving in the post, and that's that's going to be the next thing I do that is like a new kind of stream. I think we'll we'll try it. We'll try it. We'll 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 do it. We'll just we'll build we'll build some Lego, and have a nice and have a nice chill time. I'll, I'll see if I can make it so the microphone picks up that nice kind of like clicky brick sound that you get with the Legos. Um, yep. Cool, cool, cool. Ah, good. I see, I see more enthusiasm for that. Good, good. Well, that's good because I've ordered all the bits, so I have to do it now. Um, Jorgen Ervik says, um, agreed on Cyberpunk. This is, uh, but I guess I go for the dark type struggle for power vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. It's looking awesome. And Scott Jacob says, Look, we need some grim dark future to distract us from our grim dark present. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and uh, Paranogram says, More money to go with my other super chats. Missed it, I think, now that I'm able to donate to my favourite YouTubers. Call it towards the firewood budget. Ah, oh, thanks, Paranogram. That's very kind. Will keep me in firewood and is very much appreciated. Um, also, sorry if I did miss your other... Um, chat. I did. Oh no. You said, bit late, but first time catching one live. I've been listening to these while I draw lately. Thanks for taking the time to do these, Luke. You rock. Thanks very much. Um, cool. While you draw, that's good. I, um, I, I, I do, I listen to a lot of, uh, podcasts while I do creative stuff. Um, I mean, I can't draw at all. Um, what am I talking about? Creative stuff. What I mean is while I'm playing Demon Souls, um, that's <laughs> like, um, yeah. While I'm like grinding stuff in Demon Souls, that's my favorite thing to do. To sit down, do something really repetitive in Demon Souls and have a, have a podcast on. Uh, Raymond Lee says, odd question, but are you a fan of the Wombats? Ah, oh, like the band. Hang on. The Wombats have a song that I know. What was it? What was their song? Was it Kill the Director? Is that them? This is a rom-com. Kill the director. Is that them? Kill the director. Yes. Yeah. Um. I. Uh. I. I only know that one song, but I like that one song. I like it fine. It's cool. Um. Eva says any podcast recommendations? Yes. Now we're getting into it. Okay. Here we go. Here I'll give. I'll, I'll get. I'll give you. I'll give you three. I'm a huge fan. Huge huge fan of um my brother my brother and me the sort of like. Uh, the the main the main um, uh, piece of content the main product from the from the McElroy brothers who I love and think are hilarious I also really like the besties which two of them are on which is a video game thing um, two uh, all killer no filler which is a super super uh, hilarious true crime podcast about serial killers I know those things don't really go together you'll just have to trust me that it manages to be both horrifying and very very funny and also not mean-spirited they they just go off on these it's it, it's um uh kiri pritchard uh mclean and uh, rachel fairburn who host it and they are so funny they um unbelievably funny um and i would absolutely recommend it uh especially if you're a fan of my favorite murder which uh eighth Blaze um recommends yeah but um yeah all killer no filler Killer spelt K I L L A and filler F I L L A. Definitely, definitely check it out. It's um, it's it's real. It's real, real funny. Um, I I'm not like big into true crime myself. I actually find the bits where they're talking about murders sometimes like a bit much. But um, but I mean, the, there's not too much of the actual murder. There's a lot of just very funny, just riffing and tangents and, and anecdotes and stuff. Three, um, Strong Songs by Kirk Hamilton. Um, uh, Kirk is a very talented musician and does this brilliant podcast, Strong Songs, which breaks down um, the kind of form and structure of um, 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 uh, songs, songs, strong, you know, good strong songs. I would say a good starting place uh, is the, oh man, the... Um, the Bohemian Rhapsody episode is brilliant, uh, but I really, really like the um, 
the um the q a episodes where like people write in and go like what's this on this song what's this instrument and like at this point in this song it seems to go sad why does it sound sad and like what's happening here this sounds really weird stuff like that so that's so that's um so that's cool um right uh fran fry says i hear mfm i donate again my favorite murder thanks <laughs> Thanks, Fran Fry. Uh, Simu San says, um, this uh, turned into a Q&A quickly. Yes, it did, uh, which means it's probably time to, to wrap it up, right? Because um, we should... we should. Um, I'll just run out of things to say. I'm sure I've already talked about all those podcasts already. I don't have that many interesting things to offer. So I can't just... I can't... <laughs> I can't just keep talking. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, so yeah, let's let let's wrap it up for now. But next time, Mr. James, Lego live stream on the way. It's happening. Um, yeah, yeah, it'll be. We'll have a good time. Um, ah, Siddhartha uh, Daker says. Bit random, but your Bloodborne and Demon Souls playthroughs recently have inspired me to finally play Dark Souls. Been having a lot of fun with it after some initial struggling, so thanks uh, for that. You're so welcome. I, uh, I, well, I only got into those games really recently. You know, like just like a couple of years ago, and I'm they are my they are now like my favourite type of games. Just completely, I just get obsessed with them it's not even like it doesn't even always feel like enjoyment it's just i just think about them all the time and i'm not playing them and but you know that's the sign a sign of a really really like involving and intoxicating kind of game i think um uh yeah like it's a, just today i was like on my phone just googling upgrade paths for, for weapons anyway anyway thank you so much everyone for tuning in this was a really fun one um, <laughs> Claire T-Rex says the MR James Lego live stream combo would be a wild ride. Yeah, it would. We're not, we're, we won't do that. We will do one and then the other. Uh, I don't know which will come first. It will depend on when the Lego I've ordered shows up. Um, it's super on brand. I think you'll, uh, um, I think you'll like it. Yeah, it'll be a fun, fun sort of like a fun one to trial the format with. Uh, all right. That's going to do it for me. Um, I, uh, I have some, oh, I have something else that I'm working on that I haven't announced another sort of like not day job side project. Am I going to announce it right now? Hmm. Oh, I'd be agonizing if I didn't now that I've mentioned it. Um, hmm. Should have thought about this beforehand, shouldn't I? Um, okay, yeah, all right. Ah, oh, what the hell? Um, I'm, 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 I'm trying. I'm in the process. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to write a, uh, uh, a tabletop game, TTRPG. In fact, I have written a lot of it. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it. It's about, um, it's about super fast anti gravity racing cars, and being, uh, and being the driver of a, of a sci fi futuristic, uh, rad as hell um anti-gravity death race and uh yeah i've had a lot of fun writing it um and i don't really know what i'm gonna do with it but there you go there it is i, I don't like it's not it's nowhere near it's nowhere near like ready to be seen or anything but but what the hell even if nothing comes of it it's um it's uh it's been a real joy a real joy to um it's been a real joy to, uh, to 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 work on, you know, just like daydreaming, rules and law and that kind of stuff. It's um, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, that oh look, I can. Oh, you're all being really enthusiastic and nice in the chat. That's cool. That's cool. Well, hmm. Yeah, I will be. T trust me. At, at some point, hopefully soon, I will be talking um, loads more about that. Uh, it has a name which I'm not going to say yet. Uh, cool, cool, cool. All right. 
that's going to do it from me. Thanks, folks. Um, <laughs> the science boy says, dangerous to talk about passion projects like that. I have a tendency to lose interest once I've spilled the beans. Don't tell us how it works. Oh, no, I won't. No, no, no. Uh, trust me, I am always, always working to manage my own dwindling enthusiasm in basically everything I'm doing. Everything is a race against time to finish something before I get bored of it. Um, <laughs> and Adam Iorio says, Luke is now Ben from Parks and Rec. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's um it's the sci-fi death race version of Cones of Dunshire. Mm. All right. All right folks. That's going to do it from me. Thanks for joining. Thanks WFRV for August heat. That was awesome. We will see you next time. Until then. Stay safe out there. Look after yourselves and as always remain unhaunted. Thank you.